All right. Well, hello, hello, and welcome everyone to our BG5 Live. Great to have all of you here today. Uh, today is March 2nd, 2021. This is episode number 94. And today we're going to take a look at doubts. So today we're going to take a look at trait number 63 in quality two. And we're going to take a look at sharing your doubts with others. Right. So if you have any doubts today, please, please feel free to share them. <laughs> so before we get started, let's say hello to our panel. So hello, hello and welcome, Linda. Great to have you here. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. Great to have you. Welcome. <laughs> and Anna. Hey, Anna, welcome. Hi, glad to be here. No doubt about that. <laughs> hello to everybody. Great to have you. Welcome, welcome. And Natalie. Yes, I'm happy to be here. Love your flowers, Anna. Beautiful. Yeah, very beautiful. Nice. All right. Well, let's dive in to taking a look at sharing our doubts with others. And not only have... Uh, we have a new trait to talk about. We also have a new month to talk about as well. So we are now in March. And so now we're going to take a look at the journey of logic and crisis and innocence in March. So March is always an interesting month. It starts with doubt in the 63. Uh, this is the part that I forgot to fix earlier. So it's obviously still not fixed. <laughs> So I forgot to finish that. Um, but uh, to kind of take a look at where we're moving through in March, we're going to be taking a look at openness next week. We're going to take a look at crisis um, also in the 36. This is also I find very fascinating um, because last year um, during the time when we happened to be in crisis, that's when the pandemic hit and that's when the lockdown started. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens this year. I, it's been very fascinating the last few years. I've never paid attention to it until the last few years when we're in this trade of crisis. But three years ago, uh, my father passed away uh, on the 13th of uh, March, which is when we entered into crisis. Then two years ago, we had a bomb slight cyclone snowstorm blizzard uh, here in Colorado. And uh, so we had that crisis. And then last year we had the pandemic. So um, I pay extra close attention to the middle of March. It's right around March 13th. So uh, just to know that. And we also have a, like a crisis out of the crisis that we're still in from last year. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, so we're still, um, you know, it'll see what happens, you know, at that time of crisis. On the other side of crisis though, is this innocence, opinions, and control. So this is what we have to look forward to in March. And, uh, you know, it's interesting, we're in this um, trait of doubt today. And it's interesting on the other side of doubt, what grounds doubt is confusion. So it could be doubt and it could be confusion. They're, they're, they, um, they are both here. So you can see uh, we have the 64 on the other side of the 63 as the grounding, right? So there's also, um, maybe some confusion as well. So doubt and confusion are uh, what's going to be around in this next week. The other thing that we're shifting into is in a sense, taking a look at uh, kind of the storyline of this year. Um, so again, it's still grounded in uh, grounding transformation in form. And this year uh, we started off with sales and marketing. This is a gathering together. It's very tribal. We just moved in, in February 15th, we moved into the 535. So we moved into fixed patterns and progress. So we really moved into this uh, more of a collective uh, type of, uh, of energy as, as part of the background frequency. Then in April, around April 23rd, uh, depending on where you live, it'll be sooner or later, uh, we move into focus and skills, which is really about the collective logic and at the end of this year in September, we move into personal power and contemplation in the now. So just to give you a, a little heads up of uh, what this particular year is going to look like as far as the background frequency goes and the environment uh, that we happen to be in. So I, I always like bringing this up because it's kind of interesting to see if we can actually feel sort of a shift 
as things have have changed. And I, I definitely have felt kind of a shift in the last, you know, in the last few weeks that th- things feel a little different. I was, you know, I was uh, attributing it to, you know, we had a snowstorm recently, but, the, you know, there's more, it feels like it's moving towards spring and everything else. Um, but, you know, this fixed pattern and progress as well is where we're currently in. So I think that's interesting. I don't know if, if any of you have recognized a change or a shift in, uh, sort of the environment, the background frequency or not. I was very tired. I don't know if that's with the fixed breath that is a progress, but what what was that again, Deadly? I was very tired. I've slept a lot this weekend. Mm. Really, like extremely a lot. So no fixed patterns at all. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I, yeah. I've noticed it in terms of pressure around me. <clears throat> and yeah, I was extremely tired yesterday. Um, it, it just seems that the pressures have shifted, mm. at, at least in the States, um, you know, with the election and all of that, that pressure has moved into other elements now. It just seems like the, there's a pressure to move on mm. rather than this, you know, dilemma kind of energy right yeah kind of getting back into sort of the fixed fixed patterns getting back into some kind of semblance of normal rhythms right progressing um hopefully the you know in in many places the the lockdowns have have lessened or you know we we now have you know in in restaurant dining which we hadn't had for quite a while so yeah very interesting so just kind of take a look, something to pay attention to um, where we're currently at. Um, and again, this shifted around uh, the 15th of February is when we moved into um, this 35.5. So we can see it here. Um, and we shifted into quality five um, actually around February 27th. And we'll be in, uh, we'll shift to quality four starting around March 10th. So just to kind of give you an idea. So right now, We're in fixed patterns of joy. Uh, So waiting as an aspect of enlightenment, the power to be calm and to find one's place in the flow, to remain calm as the ultimate aesthetic and thus recognize the inner meaning of being. Or it can also be the disillusionment with recognizing one's place in the flow and joy dismissed as illusion uh, uh, and waiting as failure. All right, so kind of just notice where that shows up, again, in the news, in your environment, in your everyday life. And then also we have progress through altruism. So this is the sacrifice of personal for the communal progress. So it's progressive uh, communication that can bring beneficial change to the whole. The principles of interaction and harmony communicated successfully for the benefit of the whole. Or it can also be progressive progressive communication, but always the sense that personal progress has been sacrificed. Although altruistic and cooperative in general, a personal regret that interaction, um, uh, that in interaction, a greater personal expansion has been lost. So again, just an interesting uh, sort of background to pay attention to and see if you notice. I don't know if, if anyone who is watching, if you've noticed this, if you can relate to this or you can connect with this, I'd love to hear also from our panel if this if you've seen this show up. And again, this is going to be in effect until around March 10th. So, um, you know, for another, uh, another week or so. So uh, it'll be an interesting thing to watch. Yep. Nothing, nothing, no. nothing. Okay. I like, I, I like, I like the the joy of the patterns and waiting as an aspect of enlightenment. That that is a beautiful one. Yeah. And um, just, you know, I, I was like this when you told about the restaurants. I want the restaurants to open, but you know, then yeah, waiting as an aspect of enlightenment, it will come. come. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So again, some, just something to pay attention to, and you may all be in doubt, or you may be confused about it, at least in the next week. (laughs) So that's what we're talking about today. Today, we're talking about doubt, and we're talking about uh, on the other side of it is confusion, but we're really going to focus on this doubt. 
And a doubt is, it's very interesting. Uh, Ra talked about it as kind of the, the, the joke. It's after completion where 64 is actually the completion. Um, but it's, it's called after completion. It's doubt is essential for inspiration. So if we take a look at where both doubt as well as confusion on the other side, where they exist, it is in the inspiration function. And so it is through doubt and through confusion that we end up being inspired. It is the fuel to question. It In the spiral of life, all ends are beginnings. So it's starting to take a look at what are those patterns as well. And the future is dependent upon establishing with certainty the validity of a pattern. So this is in the logic circuitry, which is focused on recognizing patterns to be able to successfully move us forward into the future. So it's establishing with certainty the validity of a pattern. So it's looking for patterns, questioning the patterns, questioning things when things don't line up, doubting certain patterns. So it can also be the trait of paranoia when questions cannot be answered, right? This is also the trait of conspiracies as well. And this is the common security. The question uh, It's to question things and to challenge patterns, right? What doesn't really align? What doesn't really make sense? What are regular patterns that we see that things are going against those regular patterns? That's what doubt is all about. And your mind will doubt what you are seeing until you can reconcile any inconsistencies or the weakness in the logical patterns. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of cognitive dissonance, where it's like, uh, you know, you believe a certain way, but the patterns aren't qu quite matching up and it doesn't quite make sense. Uh, they've often said, for example, when um, when the explorers first came to, to the Americas, uh, the Indians couldn't see their ships because there was a cognitive dissonance. They didn't really understand that they were even out there. So it was really hard for them to even conceptualize it or see it, even though it was right there. So there might be things that are right in front of our faces that, you know, the mind's, mind doubts it um, because we can't really reconcile what these inconsistencies are you know, or what those uh, logical patterns, you know, that don't quite connect. So again, for this next week, uh, just recognize where you happen to be in doubt. So I'd love to hear from our, pan uh, from our panel. Um, Linda, let's start with you. If, if there's anything that you see or recognize in doubt. Yes, it's, it's really funny because this morning I woke up and I was responding to a, a film, a, a video on YouTube, and that inspired me to, to doubt or to, because there, there are a lot of confusion and doubts going on in what's happening in the world right now. And it inspired me to make sense of what's going on. And I was already uh, contemplating a little bit about writing something down about the times we are in to really make sense, to make it logical uh, and to, to take away the doubts of others mm -hmm. when it comes to what's happening. And I literally um, listened today also to some recordings of Ra because I really responded to that, to, to hear his perspective on what's going on. And I started writing an article. Mm. that I want to share <laughs> with, uh, with my clients and uh, all people because collective, I don't care who reads it, but uh, whoever it, uh, who wants to read it. And also because it's also future oriented, I really want mm. to give them some sense of what's going on towards the future. And it's, yeah, it's really funny just today, it's just happened today and I had other plans, but my gut response guided me to, to go and, and do something with the doubts. Yeah, exactly. And that's, so. that's the other thing is, you know, this is, this is part of not only having the doubts, but also, you know, inspiring others to, um, to eliminate doubt as well. 
Yeah. Yeah, Beautiful. because that's what I really feel. And it's, and I also have, yeah, I have a lot of logic and uh, in my, and also with uh, leadership, logic leadership in my design. So I really want to guide and to lead people away from their doubts into a secure future and to calm them down and feel really inspired to do so. And also do that in a really logical way to really give them facts. This is how it turns out. The, these are examples. This is how you can see it play out. And so, it, yeah, it's really funny that this inspirational pressure, mm -hmm. because it's also a pressure function. Yes. And normally my, my function of inspiration is completely open. I'm really open-minded. It's all <laughs> blank. <laughs> that I really feel, felt the urge and the pressure to write things down. Yeah, so. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> great example, Linda. Thank you so much. Beautiful. How about for you, Anna? Um, <clears throat> I think about this in terms of a, a personal experience when, uh, you know, in these little mundane times during the day or the week, <clears throat> you have a good meal and then you push your plate away or something and you're just sitting, sitting, you know, there's some completion or something's just right. You know, you had a great conversation with somebody, you click off the phone or you write an article or you, you know, some little mundane thing and you finish it. And then there's this sort of time in between that last event and the next one and for me, that's a time you can doubt, you can question, but there's always this um, energy of what's next, Even, whether it's good or bad, you know, whether a little event is good or bad, there's always this mutative pressure to go to the next thing. So you can have a perfect completion and still be you know, you might call it motivation, you might call it pressure, but something innate wants to keep going. Mm. And so I think about this trait as, as that process, the mutative process. And I also, also think about it as, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the difference between logic and sensing because mm. I love the line in the definitive book that says logic can be perfect, but it can still be wrong. <laughs> yep. You know, and I think about the, the balance between soft science and hard science or a real common conflict in especially spousal relationships between what Myers-Briggs called sensing and judging you know, that sort of hard science, soft science, that sensibility that you know something, but you can't explain it versus X, Y, Z scientific protocol, you know, and there's, there's this interplay constantly between those two things. And to tie it into human design and BG5, the, again, another part I love is the experiment with human design you you don't have to believe it you just apply it and that's where the doubt is relieved or it, you know you start to know what's true because in it, in our bodies our bodies know things and if we're always in our head thinking we can create different dilemmas all by ourselves just by not integrating logic and our sensory data and you know bg5 human design is all about listening to your body letting your mind do what it does but trusting the information that your body gives you through your decision making strategy so as you use your decision making strategy you actually sort of prove out human design and BG5. Yeah. And any doubts you may have. And exactly. Have. I love yeah. that. I love that. You know, one of, one of the things that, that uh, 
that Ra says too, is that, you know, the, the, our inspiration, our mind is not for us. It's not for us to make decisions with. It's for the other. And just like Linda was sharing earlier as well, you know, sharing, you know, your article and eliminating doubts for others. And then what you were saying, Anna, too, I was think, thinking of the after completion, right? You were saying after you complete something, right, then there's like more doubts, right? And so it moves us towards, this is ultimately the logical process is moving us forward into the future, but it's also about perfecting and making even making it even better and um, mastering things. And so, you know, you can get to a certain level of, of completion and then there's more doubts that continue to move you forward to perfecting it and making it even better. <laughs> so interesting process. Yes, Natalie. Yeah, that's so funny. So I really recognize that in the way we teach. <laughs> so, um, so, um, the courses uh, are, are perfect, right? And then each time around you find something else that can be a little, little more perfect, right? So, and uh, I really like what the slide says, you know, it's the spiral of life, all ends are beginnings and, and doubt is actually ignites this process, right? If there were no doubt, we were, we were stuck or, or stay where, where we're at, right? So, um, a doubt is not a bad thing, right? As is confusion, everything in your head, doubt, confusion, uh, it's starting the thought process. It's starting the, the questioning. It's starting to search for an answer. You don't need to have the answer instantly, right? That's the other thing. Eh? You can just, you know, sit with it or look at the pattern or think about it, right? I, I often have like, hmm, you know, something's, something's up here. It doesn't flow or it doesn't, it doesn't connect up or whatever. I don't know yet. You're right. But then, the, then it's like, you know, working, working, working until boom. And then I've got it. This is, you know, then, then you have the weakness or, or whatever you find, the inconsistency. And then you can, you know, make it better. And then, you know, the next process. So I see it also as, as, um, as um, this little image, like you, you get to a certain level and then you've reached this, but you know, you can, so the doubt doesn't, you know, loop in the same thing, but it's building on top of the previous one, which brings it to the next level. So, um, so yeah, I, I um, when you first share this with students or with clients that they have doubt and confusion, they are really annoyed by it, <laughs> but it's, it's a beautiful thing. It brings you somewhere, right? Or further in life or whatever. So. Yeah, exactly. I love that, Natalie. And it has you ask questions. It has you research. It has you go, hmm, something's not right. Or like, oh, the, I, I never recognized this before. I'm going to dive into it deeper. I'm going to research it more because I have questions. I have doubt about, you know, my reality, right? Is, is what I've been told, is that true or not? Um, you know, maybe questions for things that are in the news. Is that true or not? Right? So it's, it, it ends up, it's a pressure, as, as Anna was saying, you know, there's pressure to question things. There is a, in Facebook, uh, Debbie says she, she has the 63 uh, consciously and she's always trying to figure things out and then uh, consistently ask herself questions internally. And what is so cool, the answers show up as I just said in the mystery. And Alina shared, which is also beautiful, doubt is the old story dying so you can continue with a new and improved perspective. Mm. And then here Lisa shared doubt and confusion opens the mind just like the question mark looks like an ear. That's an oh. interesting one. Being oh, open to hear. <laughs> oh, I love that. I've never yeah. I've never looked at that. That's really no. cool. That's really, yeah. that's really awesome. And I, I really feel also that doubts inspire others. It's really yes. about bringing inspiration forward. Because if, if, for example, Natalie and I ha are having a discussion, we just inspire each other to, oh, we have to look it up or, mm -hmm. oh, that's, that's interesting. Maybe we can add something to our coaching or to whatever. But it really is like, yeah, it's not a fuel because it's not a drive stamina, but it's like a 
yeah, I made me more spiritual um, fuel to move forward when it comes to thinking and doubting and to make sense of things. So I think it's really literally inspiring to Absolutely. have doubts and to be suspicious about things. And I also was noticing the word conspiracies because there, there's a lot of things playing out at this moment and when it comes to information and what is your truth and what's not and where do you resonate on on which kind of information and what makes you doubt mm. so i i really feel yeah in this time particularly it's an invitation yeah. to become inspired and to take a, a different look or have a different perspective on the same things because there are a lot of people nowadays that have a completely different perspective on the same reality mm -hmm. it's just polarized so uh and i what i i do i sometimes bring people or make people doubt mm -hmm. what they tell me but that's where my upheaval comes at play but it's <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's amazing that's yeah. really cool I was thinking about inspiration and the process of inspiration because you it's literally breathing you know you mm. inspire you take in it's about taking in inspire. but if you can't keep taking in you have mm. to exhale at a certain point you have to let loose of something so it, the the very function itself is about taking in and releasing out, taking in, releasing out. And doubt is one of the mechanisms that keeps that process going. Oh, I love that. Yeah, exactly. Inspiration, taking it in, and but being able to breathe it out in our title of, of today's uh, of BG5 Live and in, in sharing that doubt with others as well to inspire some additional thoughts, some additional research, some additional pondering, some additional searching. I love it. Wow. And, uh, and yeah, no, Ellen said it, you're not a doubter, but a researcher of possibilities. Right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Really beautifully said. And when we take a look at the quality, uh, we're in quality two, which is the natural. It's what comes naturally. And it's about structuring. So if we take a look at what the elevation is, it's the pressure to share one's doubts with others while maintaining control. So it's, estab it's the establishing of a large framework through which achievement can be expanded and shared, and it's compensating others for their contribution while maintaining the control of direction. So it's being able to have those doubts, but allow those doubts to continue to move things forward. Now, on the other side of it is the challenge. And the challenge is doubts in achievement that can lead to the suspicion of others. So the instability in achievement that when in possession of a when when in positions of authority leads to arrogance and the desire to keep others away from the center of power. You know, so it's it's kind of being able to structure things so you can still take in, in a sense, the doubts of others, um, others, maybe criticism or others. Uh, uh, suggestions, yet still maintain control, or in a sense, to kind of cut things off, right? Because you're suspicious of others, you want to ma maintain control. And so you really don't take in or reward um, others for the sharing of their doubts, right? So is it, you know, are you rewarded for sharing your doubts, which then leads in a sense to moving things forward into the future? Or are you suspicious of others so that you really don't want to hear their doubts. Mm, interesting. Yeah, I'd love to hear from our, our panel or, or anyone who's listening if you, if you see something as well or, or this sparks some kind of thought or idea. Um, with the natural, the natural structuring in a structure, it has to be flexible and sturdy. You know, it has to be grounded 
and flexible. So to me, this whole trait is about sort of the interrelationship between what has already been established and what is now getting established or the possibility of something being established. So stability is, you know, when you think about mutation, evolution, moving forward, you know, looking back, all of that, we're always in motion, but we're trying to stabilize ourselves while we're in motion. And that, that's what I think of here, you know, my experience with this, mm. you know, that, that interplay between being stable and, and um, established and yet bringing new things in and something new always challenges the order, the previous order. So it can be destabilizing or just a reorganization, mm. but doubt's essential, you know, in, in providing stability and movement. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, Linda. Yeah. What I really find fascinating is that in these current times, we aren't really allowed to doubt Mm. what our governments are telling us. I really feel that also when uh, people are discussing with our prime minister or with other people on high positions about their doubts, you are a conspiracy theorist or you are just, you don't get the opportunity to doubt mm. what they are doing. So it's really suppressed. So it really feels like there is a kind of structuring, but in a particular way. And I also sense sometimes a kind of arrogance but that they say, we know what we are doing, so don't doubt us what we are doing. Just trust us and don't be, be a drag or something. Please just keep your mouth shut and just do as, as we say. And, um, and I feel that by giving more space for doubt, uh, there will be a more broader discussion and it will bring so much more in positive ways because there are so many also doctors and other officials are really also bringing in their doubts and their confusion about things that are playing uh, yeah, and that are uh, happening and, occur and uh, occurring that I really feel there need to be an open discussion, but it is suppressed. So doubting in these times isn't, well, it feels to me it's, it's not that common anymore to do that. Mm. And, I, and you could also, and it's beautiful with the elevation, that to, to share one's doubts with others while still maintaining control, there is a way to do it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's really fascinating to see how the control uh, plays out in these current times. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And then seeing those doubts also as a contribution, right? So uh, again, the, yes. the compensating others for their contribution, right? For their contribution and seeing what the doubts are. I mean, exactly. as, uh, you know, with my public role as a, um, as a, an authority and a pioneer, one, three, you know, I love it when there's, you know, when there's doubts, when people question things, because then it's like, oh, ooh, maybe you're right. Hmm. I never thought of it that way, you know, and, and maybe it's restructuring something, you know, maybe it's bringing forth something that we didn't have before. Uh, for me, I, I, I find, you know, the doubts are, can be really rich in that inspiration that we're talking about, because it, it is a way of listening. I love that question mark being the ear, you know, yeah. listening to what the questions are that can potentially spark a, a new idea that allows us to move forward successfully into the future. Yeah. 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 And that's also the background frequency um, that you also have. So, and I really feel that 
things are not progressing because we are not listening to each other. Mm. It's like repeating the same mantra over and over again. So it's really interesting to, to see this play out. Absolutely. Wow. Very cool. Yeah, yeah Natalie. No, yeah. Not really, I really like what you shared, but it's, uh, um, I, I, I forgot my uh, thingy, but I like, I like uh, this perspective. Oh yeah, about the questions. I also, I love questions in, in classes and they, they, they bring a deeper level. And I was mm-hmm. thinking, if like what, like if we are talking now about the government, but think about a company, and then you're not allowed to doubt, or, or to ask a question about the why we're going in a certain direction or whatever. And it's not that you, you're. It, I I have a fifth a, a fifth line quality, which is the um, rebellion. Now it's a, what is it, a messenger. But but it's a kind of rebellious and the third line maybe as well. But it's it's not to, um, to it's not to question the the, the the management. Let me just say, uh, in the sense that you want to throw them over. No, it's also to to better whatever you are doing, right? Mm-hmm. And to deliver a better product, or maybe you know a more efficient way, or maybe whatever. Right? God brings you forward. So, yeah, and the other thing I wanted to point out, I don't know if we t- touched it, but doubt and, and in the 63, it's not about your own life, right? So everything in the mind is not about your own life. It's about, you know, what you can bring as outer authority to question, to bring the world or whatever you're doing in your organization further, because doubts in your mind about your own life, go back to your decision making. You know, just do the, the color parts <laughs> of you but <laughs> it's not made to doubt your own direction yeah. right exactly also, the, 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 this has a lot of fears with it mm-hmm. and if we're if we're really and and when you're talking about controlling the collective you the previous paradigm has been tribal you can't control your team or your village or your nation without some kind of fear induced structure Mm. and that's all breaking down now over this transition 2020 to 2027 it's entering the very beginnings of a whole new structure where personal doubt is it, it, it you don't have to doubt yourself you can actually trust your decision making strategy be an individual that's in a perfectly coordinated and contributing group of people but you're not controlled by fear it, there's not an over governance of fear it's an opportunity to be governed individually by your decision-making strategy and governed as a group or a team in the office or business or whatever it is through um, without so much dominance of fear, without being threatened of, of loss or resources or whatever. It's more of a communal cooperative style that we're just barely beginning to enter but fear right now has dominated our social structures yeah that's part of what's breaking down too is the the fear level in our governments and our health system and our education system is really magnified right now yet there's an opportunity for um positive challenge for each person's value to start operating. Yep. Yep. Exactly. That's something what, what Ra also shared in, in, in challenge is the, the, the greatest uh, potential to, for growth. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Elisa shared also beautifully 
when people are afraid of questions, it's like they're afraid to let go of the not self, or in other words, surrender to the bigger, to a bigger or different perspective. Wow. Yeah, really beautifully said, Lisa. Yeah, yeah. thank you. And that's what, what Ra also pointed out. It, it's all about surrendering mm. to the program, surrendering to life. Because your vehicle is going to, 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 to ride a, a certain direction and you don't have to fight it, but you have to enjoy the ride. And I really feel that that is really, really extra, extra important going into uh, 2027 or getting close is to really go back to your, to yourself, to your uniqueness because that is, and your decision-making strategy, because that is your, your compass, your, the, the direction you have to go. And to, uh, and also what Natalie pointed out, not to doubt yourself. And that's what he also uh, told me, because he said, well, you have to Im understand how magnificent you are. We all are, because we are all so unique. So don't doubt that part <laughs> and, just sur and just surrender to life and enjoy the ride. Yeah. So it's, it's amazing to, yeah, to, it, uh, especially when we're taking a look at the times we are in and where we are going to, to talk about these things because it's more important than ever because we really need to be ourselves. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. In, in a sense, having that free, that freedom to doubt and to yes. enjoy the doubt and enjoy the pressure. It's, it's a mental pressure yes. and it's not that we have to act on it, but we can really enjoy that doubt because it brings forth more questions uh, to answer, uh, yes. which brings forth the mystery of life. And when we trust ourselves, then those questions are, are not for ourselves, but really to support others, right? And exactly. to support others in making sense of their own doubt, right? That's what the mind is really used for. The mind is really used for, you know, as Natalie was pointing to, and as Linda was talking about, you know, it's, it's not used to make decisions for ourselves. It's used as an outer authority for others. And that's when it's utilized properly. Really beautiful. Well, we'll have, we'll, we'll get a few wrap up, uh, uh, thoughts here in just a moment. I do want to point out, I had a really hard time finding someone. Um, this is not someone that I'm familiar with, but in Colombia, I guess he's pretty popular, but uh, known as Dr. Lip Lipo, does uh, liposurgery. Um, Cesar uh, Bellila. Um, so the life work thing, it, it theme is of consciousness. So you look beyond the needs of why we are here by questioning, testing the patterns and flowing with life to rise above the desire for more experience. So again, it's, it's questioning, it's testing the patterns. And just like Linda was saying earlier, it's this flow of life right? That, that allows you to continue to question and move things forward. So um, Cesar is a, a medical doctor and founder of the Plastic and Cosmic uh, cosmetic Surgery Center, Evolution MD, who is popularly, popularly known online as Dr. Uh, Lip Lipo. And he is featured on a reality show uh, called, uh, you could probably pronounce this better than me. Yeah, Antisi Fabuloso from Dr. Lipo. There we go. <laughs> so again, I'm, I'm not really familiar with them, but I just had a hard time finding someone. All right. So it's really been a fun conversation and uh, bringing up a lot of questions and a lot of things to ponder and uh, dive into. So again, uh, uh, it's really great having you all on board. If you are new and you want to find out more about your own uh personal career design. You can download your chart and follow along as we take a look. You can see if you have that particular trait or not. I don't believe any of us um, on, on the panel here have the, the 63. Um, but again, taking a look, do you have it or do you not have it? And where do you have that pressure or not? Um, also, you can follow along with BG5 Live and 
uh, watch our past episodes. And of course, our classes start in May. So we'd love to have you join us in some of our May classes. I'm going to be starting a BG5 certification course. We also have the foundation course starting, lots of other courses starting. Uh, I think the uh, BG5 Profit Potential uh, coaching certifications also starting. So some really fun, amazing courses starting in May. So time to start thinking about that and planning for that as well. So to wrap everything up, I would love to hear from, uh, from each of our panel. And of course, if there is anything in our BG5 Live or our live Zoom room, would love to hear uh, comments as well. And there's, uh, there's Moxie coming in for her final <laughs> appearance here. So I would love to, I would love to hear what, what should people be aware of? What should they notice? Um, what should they take forth uh, for this coming week? Who would like to start? How about you, Anna? I would say um, don't personalize the doubt. Mm. Um, allow it to be there. Allow it to show you something. Allow it to uh, allow yourself to be moved on by it because the doubt, if you allow it to um, mature, maybe or or get clear, you know, present itself to you, that is the contribution to the collective. Mm, beautifully said. I love that, Anna. Thank you so and, much. And with that, I, I really like the word cognitive dissonance. I've, I, I recently learned about that. And it's, it's so fascinating how we do not see something that is not there if we don't know it or don't, you know, so... And, and, and the doubt is helping us to pass through it. So maybe, maybe observe if you can see, although you cannot really see, but if you observe any cognitive dissonance, there's so much going on in the world. Like, you know, mm -hmm. is there something behind what you regularly know as being true or right? Use this energy to, uh, <laughs> to unlock some of the cognitive dissonance. Yeah, yeah, beautifully said, Natalie. Yeah, thank you. How about for you, Linda? Yeah, it's beautiful what Anna and Natalie share. Um, and I think, um, according to all of that, um, inspire others. Mm. Share your doubts um, so you can inspire others because there is a lot going on. And maybe your thoughts, your doubts, your confusion will help others make sense of their confusion or inspire to to go and look for answers and to to really yeah take a look beyond the the, the, the veil for for yourself just to 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 dig down to to yeah to really dive into some information and to really be led by your decision maker strategy in doing so so um yeah, inspire others and share that. it with a collective. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And and what Linda said is exactly what this, you know, what this trade is all about. As we mentioned several times before, it's not about making decisions from your mind or having the doubt turn into paranoia that makes you concerned. It's it's for others. So so sharing your doubt with others. Um, inspiring others to ask questions, to look at things in a different way, to ponder things in a different way. Again, it is a pressure. So again, that pressure not to make decisions. So don't make decisions there. Follow your decision-making strategy and allow that pressure to be there and find the magic on the other side with the answers that may come forth through that doubt. So allowing it to be. Really, really beautiful session. Thank you, everyone who has who has contributed, and a really rich, rich discussion. So I want to thank each and every one of you. Moxie, thanks you as well, <laughs> and uh, have a fabulous week. And we look forward to seeing you all next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.